Hey guys, it's your boy Nistro here, and welcome back to our coverage of Super Heavy Samurai at the North American WCQ. Now, uh, last time we talked about Minadium Super Heavy Samurai and how that deck performed um, in the top tables of the event, but now we're going to talk about a deck that almost re reached a threshold of top 64. It was one loss away. Um, from reaching the top 64 slot, it made 70th place, and it is Denglong Super Heavy. And as you can see, there's more than just two spells and traps in here, there's also the Machina Overdrive. And the reason why this is here is because it is an instant access to Machina Citadel by destroying any machine monster you control. Um, so it's a really brilliant mix here, and I believe this may have been the guy who posted a deck profile or the combo video of uh, Dang Long Super Heavy Samurai to begin with. Um, it definitely looks like it's inspired by his um, ideas and theories about how Super Heavy Samurai should play, but um, I have I, I can't confirm or deny whether it's the same person. So instead, we're just going to look at the deck list, share, I'm gonna share my thoughts, and I'll let you guys uh, feel about it the way that you feel. So the Super Heavy Samurai stuff looks kind of standard. Um, General Coral is a great um, Pendulum Scale if you're playing Ballista, double Big Ben K because you don't want to brick on it. And especially when you're playing Super Heavy, that's a lot more important. I guess when you're playing a non-Super Heavy engine, like Minadium, it's less important if you set up your scale because that's not the point. The point isn't to set up a scale, where in Super Heavy, the point is to set up a scale, so you need to play more copies of Big Bang K. Um, triple Motorbike, one Scales, one Gaia Booster, one Soul Horns, Triple Peacemaker, Triple Piercer, uh, Stealthy, uh, Triple Wagon. And Wagon is still the most fragile starter in all of the super heavy um, engine, but at the same time, if it does resolve, going into Geary Gaunt straight from it is a really good feeling. Um, one box, one tunneler to uh, get our plus two. We, we want to dig more into our hand traps and stuff, and I'm assuming also into Machina Overdrive. And uh, next we have one Machina Citadel. In this build, it doesn't really look searchable, maybe except by Genius, but, um, hold on, I just realized there's no Regulus in this build. I'm not tripping, am I? Like, there's no Regulus anywhere to be found. Um, but let me just double check that real quick, because I, 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 I want to make sure, like, wait a minute, if, is there really no Regulus in the build? And if there isn't Regulus in the build, is it because he couldn't afford it, or is it because he um, actually decided not to play it? I think that would be a good question to have for the creator of this decklist. Because why not just play Regulus? He's on Sargus and Merrymaker. Regulus has to be in the list. There's no, no shot that it isn't. I really hope that isn't anyway. All right, my shit on Facebook's not loading. German build, 70th place. Yeah, no, um, there is no Regulus in this build, despite the, uh, you know, 
despite the addition of gigantic champion Sargus, there does not seem to be any search targets off of it. You're kind of just playing the deck as is with no Regulus. I just find that weird because you sort of need that extra protection, but at the same time, I can see why it would conflict with the Zephyr package, Zephyr Yang Zing package. At the same time, it's way too significant not to play, but maybe it's just the current, um, Wait, what was I about to say? Dude, it's like 1 a.m. I just lost my train of thought completely. Uh, fuck. I was like, okay, maybe it's because they felt like the game slowed down a bit. Um, that they fucking decided to take Regulus out, but I don't think this deck can be played properly without Regulus. You can remove one of the Machina Overdrives or one of the Zephyr Neus. You definitely don't need two of them, especially since you're not on Beyond the Pendulum. I feel like you could get away with one, but I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe you can get away with one Zephyr Neu. Especially when you're this far over 40. So next for the sideboard, we have Double Bestial Magnum, one Druus Worm, and again, Triple Sage de Fleur. But this time, surprisingly, the pure or the deck that's more the deck that's closer to pure Sabrevi Samurai is just not utilizing Spider Orchid. And instead he uses a Sasha Fleur as the anti floodgate and a Centric as an anti floodgate as well. Assuming that the floodgate isn't an, an, um, anti spell itself. Uh, one more pink of Trops, and I feel like this is. Like, the reason why I kept these seven together is because, like, this is the uh, We Hate Spells and Trap Cards set right here. Uh, next off, we have Phantasme to help us draw cards on our opponent's turn and to also help us... Um, oh, not on our opponent's turn, just to help us draw cards. Actually, wait, no, it is on our opponent's turn. Oh, my God, dude. Being awake this long is not good for you. <laughs> I just start saying, like... I fall asleep and just start saying random shit. Anyway, Jizukiru. Uh, it's a one of, surprisingly. I guess this would be our best genius search. And then Cumungus is at two for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why giving your opponent a level seven Earth Kaiju is the preferred thing to do for people, but I'm sure there is a pretty good reason for it. Uh, extra deck, we have Ninja Saratobi. We have Stream Tranking, and if you're wondering how to get rid of some of these spells and traps in your grave, or if that's even a possibility, it definitely is when Steam Tranking hits the board, because it can banish all spells and traps from your graveyard, and inflict 200 for each. But that's that's not even the whole effect, right? It can discard up to two cards and pop that many cards on field. So it's it's a really, it's a really, really big, beefy express train, you know? Um, this dude got 4,800 defense. 4,800. It's crazy. And he can use that to just slap niggas around, too. It's wild. Uh, so one Deng Long, Deng Long, the man of the hour, on Synchro Summon, he adds a Yang Zing card from deck to hand, which would be your nine pillars. So he can add a negate straight from deck to hand, and you can call it a turn. Or... You can synchro summon with him or do whatever it is that you want to do, have your ways with this Deng Long, and then he gets to summon a Yang Zing monster directly from deck, which would be your Zephyr Neo. Now, uh, all you need is some way to get Zephyr Neo off the field after that, and you can either Pendulum summon it back or your dad could summon it back randomly. Um, wait, did I just say your dad? Goddamn. I don't even know what I'm saying. Yeah, but you just got to Pendulum Summon it back, or you have to pop it with, like, Baron Pop. But even if you do pop it, you have to summon it back anyways. So just get rid of it by some conventional means, and then Pendulum Summon it back. Right. Baron. 
Excel Synchro, both, you know, you, you probably know the combos by now. Tilting Entrainment, if you've been following Super Heavy post Scarecrow ban, you know that this is one of the most uh, essential cards to starting your combo and getting more bodies on board that, you know, can help your opponent. Or that can help you build a board against your opponent. And next we have um, Sword Soul Sinister Sovereign, Quixing Longzyong. And what it does is it does a whole bunch of things that like remove cards from field without negating them. Like it's a it's a trigger effect happy synchro monster that says, oh, when this thing's activated, you can banish this in this face down. Or when that thing's activated, you can banish this in this face down. Or you can inflict 200 or 1200 life points when a certain thing is activated. So it's, it's a little more quirky. It's not something that I would have expected in you know, a super heavy build, especially not one that isn't focused around Kashira. Maybe he's supposed to be playing like Chinging instead of this one, and they wrote this one down instead. But I've seen this mistake on both the Facebook post and on, um, oh, I can't even say mistake, but I've seen this card both on the Facebook post and on uh, wherever else I saw the list. So I don't think it is fake news um, that he he was he decided to play this particular sort of monster. Uh, one ballista for the searches, one apo for the end board, one genius for the routes. Uh, Sargus for a four material Zeus. I guess nothing else since you're not playing Regulus for some reason, even though it's free. Uh, one Bagusk. Love this card. Um, love the artwork, love the vibe, uh, love the effect. <laughs> one Gear Yiga X and one Zeus. So I, I think the beautiful thing about Dang Long Zephra that made me gravitate towards it is that the, the deck just does not lose to random board breaker number 29. It doesn't just lose to random board breakers. It's like you're playing... Um, like you have a bunch of Omnid Gates on field in your end board, and you're kind of just playing against, um, like knowing when to use your front row interruptions versus your back row interruptions versus potential hand interruptions is like the one of the best things that I enjoyed about playing Modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I really did enjoy Denglong when it first came out, but then... Um, as time went along and Zephyr Neo came out. Wait, Zephyr Neo was already out. Dude, I have no idea what's happening to me right now. I am just like losing it emotionally. <laughs> like I'm saying things and they're just not making sense. I, I, I just I just need to stop talking. But yeah, that was the super heavy samurai. Um Danglong Zephyr list. I think it's really... I'm really happy that this deck did well because this is, again, the deck that I've been rooting for for so long and to see it do so well after the Scarecrow ban. Even with um, Konami hinting at the um, OCG exclusive coming out in Duelist Nexus, I still think they could do more with helping... Um, super heavy with the scarecrow ban i do still like that the engine's intact but i also don't like that the engine's less versatile because there's way less one card or even two card at some point starters for the deck so you guys let me know what you think about the current state of super heavy samurai what builds are you guys trying out um it, to me super heavy samurai feels a little bit like gate guardian where like you, there really is no one there, there really is not a unified build that is determined to be the best at the moment, whereas rather instead everyone else is choosing to play Super Heavy as they like it, and sort of just like making the deck conform to their playstyle rather than, you know, Super Heavy or them con conforming to the Super Heavy playstyle, which I thought was interesting. Um, so that's it. See ya.